Okay, full disclosure, I am from New Jersey, but for the money I paid, he would not provide a translator. So you have to, you have to follow up. <laughs> so I'm Larry Biggs, I'm CEO of Unisource Health. Uh, usually at this time I say I'm in the healthcare space, but I think everybody here understands that. We're, based, we're a Nevada-based corporation in Carson City. We have sales offices in Playa del Rey, and we have the exclusive distribution rights to a product called the RM3A, a medical device. In our space, we have a problem. Medicare and private insurance is requiring physicians to provide preventative care to their patients. However, and the reason they want to do that is because they, want, they believe in an unusual situation, the government gets it before private practice, they understand that if they stop the disease now, they're not gonna be caring for somebody with diabetes for 30 years. So they understand that. So they're asking the physicians to test, find the disease early. But the physicians do not have the technology available to them to do this testing. Also, they're not getting reimbursed to do this testing. So they don't have the technology and they're not getting paid to do it. So there's the problem. The solution is our RM3A device. It's got five FDA clearances. It's a six minute non-invasive test. It gives the doctor a spectrum of data to be able to tell where the patient sits in, the, in progress of disease. It generates significant profit. So I think somebody, one of the earlier speakers really got onto this a little bit, that it generates significant, significant revenue for, there's New Jersey, significant revenue for the practice, $350 to $800 per test. So we fix the problem by giving the physician the clinical ability to prevent disease and see disease early and also profit from it to earn payment for their services. I don't have the time today to get into all the depth of our product, but the simple overview of it at 30,000 feet is we look for eight biomarkers, biomarkers that are precursors to disease. We want to prevent vascular aging, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, endothelial dysfunction. We, you know, we have multiple neuropathies that we can detect. We just received a patent a few, about a month ago that we can actually detect for, for diabetes as accurately as a blood test without any kind of blood prick, without any kind of invasive action at all. We can actually detect the same insulin resistance. So here's a financial snapshot of who and what we are. We buy our machines for $13,000 and sell them for $40,000. I love businesses that buy something for a dollar and sell it for three. It's a simple business model. So we have a good margin in that, but as everyone in this room knows, it's not an expensive a cost of acquisition to get in front of a physician. It's not an easy thing to do, but we have a strategy to get there. We formed in 2017. We have had no equity, no investment whatsoever, funded by the, the principals only and we've done $2.7 million in revenue. First 12 months of business will be about 3.2 before we finish the, the year. Most of our business in the beginning has come from medical trade shows. Medical trade shows are consistent for us. I know if I spend $40,000 on a trade show, within the next 60 to 90 days, I'm going to get a quarter million dollars of revenue, sometimes more. We've had shows where we've, get, we've pulled out as much as 560,000 out of a show. So going forward, our revenues in year one, startup company, we're gonna pull out profitable with half a million dollars in revenue. Uh, I'm sorry, net profit, apologize. Year two, 14 million with $4.5 million in revenue. Year three will be $18 million, almost $7 million in net profit. Our exit strategy is what's important to the investor, is very simple. We're going to go, the company intends to really reverse merge into a public vehicle. Most likely we'll do a reverse merger, but the other options are S1, a Reg 8 registration, but we want to go public because that's my background. I've actually taken a prior company to the NASDAQ. I understand how to do that path, how to get there, and the benefit of this business is we can drive our path to the NASDAQ through revenue and through net profit. We don't have a cure for cancer that I'm waiting three years to do. We're not, we don't have some invention. We basically are making money now and it drives to revenue. The stock price is based on what our, what our net income will be. Anybody who understands the public markets, valuations at a 10 time multiple, at the end of year two would be worth 63 million. But also anybody who understands this, a fast growing company who's improving every quarter, that's actually you know, growing the way we're growing, we would really be in that 20 multiple range. 
So more likely we'd be around that 100 to $126 million market cap. Who's gonna do this? I'm Larry Biggs, I'm the CEO. I started a company in my living room that I took to over the counter and I took to the NASDAQ market to a $1.2 billion market cap. Our stock went from 25 cents when we started to $29 by the time we finished. Gail Davis is a military woman, and as you would think, a military woman, she's very organized, she's very structured, and a perfect format for a COO. Dr. Mitch Genn, Chief Science Officer, he's the guy. He's authored four books on preventative care. He understands this world, he gets this world. If you went out and said, I'm a physician, I wanna re restructure my office into a preventative care and stop disease, this is the guy that you would go to, he's our Chief Science Officer. Roberto Batetta, he's uh, with us in the other room uh, demonstrating. He's grown rapid growth companies. Last company he was with, Norvergence, he took from 130 million up to 300 million when he was head of sales. So we understand how to grow rapid growth companies. Clayton Thomas, we kind of call him our brainiac, very knowledgeable in the healthcare space, understands marketing concepts, understands clinical testing value. So he's our guy that basically is our our go-to guy for really any kind of knowledge, knowledge need. Summary, we have the exclusive rights to the product, the RM3A. We're selling something that benefits the physician by improving the care for their patients and preventing disease, and they live longer, as well as earning significant revenue for that doctor. Our doctors are averaging you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars more per year in revenue when they install our unit into their practice. Well, I'm not an Obama fan, but one of the things he did do under meaningful care is he allowed people to get reimbursed, doctors, I'm sorry, to be reimbursed when you're checking people for health care checks, for preventative care. So that allows my device to be used twice a year for preventative care and four times a year under the blood pressure to check for symptoms. So that's something that is, is I think, I'm going to repeat myself what I said earlier. It's the first time I've seen government taking more aggressive action than private practice. The only time in my lifetime that I've seen it, because Medicare, Medicaid, they're ahead of the curve on the preventative care than in the private practices. Already generating revenue. For a startup company, no capital, we're gonna do a little bit over three million for the first year. Exit strategy to uplist to the NASDAQ, I believe very easily through revenue and through net profit, we should hit that $100 million valuation. Management has built multiple $100 million revenue companies, so we've done it before. CEO's exact strategy is, I'm gonna do exactly what I did in my prior company and this company, just take it from over the counter to the NASDAQ, drive it with revenue, not a lot of technology. I do have multiple patents in my name, but I'm not a technology guy. I'm really, I got, I got three rules in business. Earnings per share, earnings per share, and earnings per share. Those are my rules in business. Thank you very much. Any questions or?